Well, I'm back. I hope you can hear me. Um, now <laughs> we've got our screen shared. So hopefully this will get us on the right on the right path. Okay, so here is the whoops picture that was uploaded uh, that we're trying to make. Uh, this person uh, had a question about how to do the sides and apparently they've already got a hexagon base cut. Um, so the information that I've gotten uh, are the dimensions of the, uh, of the base. And so looking at those, says it's 32 across, each edge 18 and 3 eighths, uh, and don't know how much to open up the top. So good information, but we do need one more measurement before we can uh, size the sides, and that is the height, uh, which would be from here to here vertically. We would know, uh, need to know how tall you want the sides. So uh, I will uh, demonstrate it at 12 inches. Uh, so we'll say a foot tall. Um, and then, like I said, you got 32 across. So into Design Edge, the first thing I'm going to do is draw the actual base that you've already got. So I'm going to use Y for the polygon tool, 6 for a six-sided. Uh, and then you said it was 32 across, so 32 enter. And that will give us uh, the 32-inch uh, the across polygon. I can dimension that from an H on the path to a P perpendicular snap. Zoom in, you can see that's your 32. Uh, just to kind of cross check and verify, if I uh, do a control D dimension from an end node point to an end node point, uh, that's 18, 4, 7, 52, 3, 7, 5. So I mean, I'm a tenth of an inch different than your 3 eighths. I'm assuming that's probably just a measurement, uh, just a rounding problem uh, on a tape measure versus uh, CAD. So if you want it to open up, the first thing you can do, you want it to open up, you say uh, three or four, let's, let's do four inches. Uh, that's not a whole lot of slant uh, in a foot. So the very first thing that you're going to want to do is to just go ahead and offset this so that it will draw you uh, the top shape. So I'm gonna O for offset, four for a four inches, and hit enter, then I'll hold control and click just to the outside of that polygon. So now you, your view is looking straight down from the top. You can see the, the black base in the center uh, and then the sides, uh, and then this would be the top edge. So we need to know how tall to make this piece uh, for these sides. And so looking at that from the side, let me just draw uh, a line, and we're going to go uh, zero left and right, and we're going to go up that 12 inches. So what I did was a line, uh, just dropped it somewhere, uh, and then we'll use the at sign for an at reference, uh, and uh, zero for moving none in the x-axis, so we can go straight up, and then comma 12, enter. Uh, and then that will give us uh, a 12 inch tall line. And then I'm gonna go ahead uh, and uh, draw the, the fact that it's leaning out four inches uh, as a line, uh, not really a piece, but a line. Uh, see, Chris, I'm using advanced design. Uh, Basic won't have the dimension tool, uh, but um, and probably not the polygon tool. Uh, so you'd have to draw that manually. Uh, but uh, everything else as far as coordinates and uh, or coordinates and references uh, will all be the same. So let's see, I'm going to go uh, at so that it starts from my beginning point of the line, and then now I'm going to go to the right four, comma, zero up and down and hit enter. And I'm going to right click to cancel that line tool. So what I have now is if you were looking at this uh, from the side, uh, here's the base down here, and then they're straight up and down so that we'll be 12 inches tall. 
So we want to be 12 tall. That means this side needs to angle because we're moving over four. Let me put that in there. We're moving over four. So the actual side of that is going to be from the end of that line to this node. So that's the, that's the angle that the side's going to lay out. Um, don't really care what the angle is. Uh, the only reason I drew that is it's easier than using the Pythagorean theorem uh, to get that actual length, uh, which you could do. It'd be a squared plus b squared is c squared, so you'd have to take 4 squared plus 12 squared and then take the square root of that. Or you can draw this real quick, hit the F8 tool, uh, and it tells us that is 12.649, or in advanced you can draw uh, a dimension. So that's 12.6491. And now we'll go over here and grab a couple more measurements and we're about ready to just make the panel. So we'll get a dimension. Let me make these just a touch bigger. Like that, okay. We're going to have to grab these sides because we're going to need those measurements. So all I need to do to make this panel now is uh, I need the bottom uh, width, the top width, and then the height is going to be uh, this over here. Let me get that one bigger. So now we have all we need to, uh, to know to draw that piece. So down here, I will type L for line. Uh, just click anywhere to anchor it. And I'm going to put an at sign so that it references my first click. And I'm going to put in that first number, which is 18.4752, comma, zero. I don't want to go up and down any and hit enter. There's me a line. Okay, so right click. I'm done. There's the bottom. Now I'm going to just draw another line. Click anywhere I want at 23.0940, comma, zero, enter. That draws me a 23.094 line. Right click. Now I need these two lines to be center line. I need to be, you know, it, it needs to go and uh, angle out in both directions. So I'm going to just move it from its M midpoint. So I'm going to, first I pushed M for the move tool, then M for a midpoint snap. Uh, and then click on that first line, there's the top line rather. And now I'm going to move that so that it sits directly on top of uh, the bottom line. So I'm going to go M for midpoint snap again and click the first line I drew with my crosshairs and it'll snap it right on top of it. So now I have two lines on top of each other, uh, but you can see that it's still green. So the, the top one is still selected. So very easy here. I'm just going to M for move, and I'm going to click wherever I want, and see I'm dragging that top line around, and I'm going to move again at so that it's a relative coordinate relative to where I clicked. We're going to go now zero in the left and right, and I'm going to put a comma, and we're going to go up the height that we need it to be, which is 12.6491, and hit enter. That's essentially our piece. All we have to do is connect the dots. So I just push L for line, and I'm going to push E for endpoint snap and click on this half, E for endpoint snap and click here, and I'll right click, hit the space bar to repeat the line tool, E for endpoint uh, snap, click here, E for endpoint snap, click here, right click, J to link it together. Now if I cut six of those and weld them all together, um, it will make sides for that bottom 32 inch wide uh, hexagon uh, that is uh, four inches offset. So if I show you that one, that's 40 inches, be 40 inches across at the top. Uh, and I can weld all those together. It is certainly possible to now that you have this drawing, uh, to put some of them together, uh, especially if you're cutting on a 5 by 10 table and you want it uh, all one piece. So let me move that out of the way. And all I've got to do to do that is copy those. 
so I can copy it and I'll copy it from the top corner node point and so what we'll do let's just make uh, make it in halves so I can select all this I can rotate from the end node point to the end node point and then the finally to drop it the new point would be the end node point here uh, so anytime you rotate, you've got three clicks. So R for rotate. We have a base point, which is where we want to hinge it. So I'm going to end node point to that corner. And then so that I have a reference, I'm going to rotate from, and I'm going to grab this corner down here. And so that lets me hinge it on that corner. And then I can drop that last corner right on the end node point snap again uh, and have that piece. Now to cut this with design edge, I would come in and trim those pieces out. Um, one other thing you, you don't have to, you can tr X trim the first one and then you can K break in node point in node point uh, and leave that in there. Okay, in node point in node point. What can happen though is when you do that is it will not let you join it back together. Let's see what happens. Okay, see that's not where I want it to join. I need to join the outside uh, perimeter. So the easy way to fix that is to draw yourself a little reference up here. Uh, then just grab your bend lines. Okay, and I'm gonna move, copy, I'm gonna copy those uh, off of my drawing. And then I'm gonna delete these out. And then I'm gonna J join my piece together. Then all I've gotta do, remember, is use my reference point. I can M move. And since I copied this little reference circle, I'll copy from its center to the center of the other one and it'll put those right back in. Then I can make sure I have bend line settings set up in my uh, offset convert. Tell it okay. In for new cut path. Yes to convert my bend lines. And as you can see it perforated that so that I can hand bend that. And if I cut two of those, then I'll have sides. So. Hopefully that answered Dan's question and uh, gives you guys some fun geometry to try on a Tuesday. So thanks for watching.